Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. Uh, so I didn't record a video um, last week, um, you know, no particular reason. Uh, I just didn't get around to it and kind of got distracted with other things, um, but um, I'm doing fine. And so today, rather than, you know, giving an, an update about um, the COVID-19 situation, um, you know, because probably most of you, wherever you might be in the world, are, you know, hold out in your house and socially isolating and have been obsessed with this. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about that very much other than just to um, say a couple brief things. Um, one is that, um, I mean, it's still spreading in the U.S. Um, everywhere, uh, including in Washington State where I live. But, um, you know, there's a definite trend that, you know, I'd noticed over the last week or two and, you know, several other people have, you know, have, you know, noticed and written about who are professionals at this that it isn't spreading um, nearly as quickly here as in other places. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had the, the most um, number of um, coronavi coronavirus cases in the U.S., and you know, now we're uh, barely in the top five. And I think the reason maybe is that um, it, uh, the alarm got sounded here first and we started to put, um, you know, send people home from work, um, do social is isolation, um, you know, tell everyone to close schools, tell everyone to stay at home, um, you know, about a week before most places. And the rate of spread um, has definitely slowed here. Um, which hopefully means for those of you in, you know, other parts of the country, other parts of the world, that, um, you know, after you give things about three or four weeks, um, things will slow down, hopefully give some breathing room to um, the medical system. And uh, I just want to say, you know, what you've been doing, um, is definitely helping. Uh, we have data that shows that it's helping. So um, please keep it up. You're doing something very important, whether you realize it or not. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is, um, uh, you know, in the U.S., there's, you know, for instance, um, the medical system can just get overtaxed. There's not enough ventilators if people go into respiratory distress, you know, not enough um, healthcare providers to, you know, uh, attend every patient, um, you know, properly as they would in ideal circumstances. And so what that, you know, ha you know creates is that you can get into a, a triage situation of, you know, who can you help, you know, who can you best direct your resources to. And so one of the things that sort of come out of that is um, they say, okay, people with other health conditions, which often includes people who have disabilities, uh, can uh, find themselves at the back of the line according to, you know, what's been published um, you know, for state guidelines, and um, there's a lot of pushback now from the disability community on, hey, you're not really um, treating us, you know, fairly or equitably. Um, just having an underlying health condition or disability doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to survive coronavirus. Um, you know, I recently read a story about a, um, a person in the Netherlands who has Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is uh, a much more severe type than what I have. Um, he got COVID, um, you know, was diagnosed, um, put into quarantine, 
then a while later decided, okay, we need to put you in intensive care. Uh, but after a couple days of that, he recovered, and I think he's you know either home now, but definitely on the road on the road to recovery. So you know, people um, with health conditions with disabilities um, can recover from this. Um, you know, the the major thing is we need you know more equipment and, you know, to bend the curve so we don't overtax the system. But, um, you know, it's kind of a big issue um, for those of us who might, you know, find their, ourselves, you know, automatically ruled out, um, you know, when, you know, our actual health doesn't really warrant that. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll put some links in the description below uh, regarding that. Um, okay, the other thing I wanted to say is, you know, just to, you know, um, send a message out to all of you and hope that you're doing well. Now, you know, I know that, um, you know, being, you know, isolated and not having much contact for other people can be di very difficult. Um, now, my, my personality is kind of an introvert, um, so I will, you know, I, um, you know, at some level it's kind of almost in, you know, uh, you know, uh, staycation to not have to go out, you know, but what I find after a couple of weeks is I really do, you know, miss going out, seeing people, you know, talking to them in person, and, you know, for people with a more extroverted personality, it, I'm sure it must be, you know, even more taxing. Um, just remember, even if you're by yourself or just with a few, um, you know, you know, friends, roommates, fam family members, um, you aren't alone, you know, by yourself or with them. Um, we're all kind of in this together. We're all in the same condition. Um, so, um, you know, hang in there. We can certainly think of each other, um, even if we aren't seeing each other in person. And finally, I'd like to say a huge thank you to, you know, all of the people who are, um, delivering stuff, getting uh, stores stocked, um, you know, making, you know, all the necessities of life, providing, um, you know, power, water, internet um, in this difficult time, uh, providing health care um, to those who need it, you know, thank you. Um, it's very important what you do, and um, we all should really appreciate you. So, um, with that, um, you know, I hope uh, I hope you're well, um, and sending positive thoughts to all of you, um, and hopefully we'll um, talk again very soon.